Deion Sanders has a much better team heading into 2024, but does he have some of the same problems that he had in 2023? You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Bohr, but today's episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. We are also brought to you by the, the Locked on Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. We're talking about Colorado. We're talking about all things Deion Sanders and the Buffs. And the latest thing that happened with Deion Sanders and the Buffs is not the best. Coach Prime on a recent well-off media video was ripping into his team and exposing. I don't know if he was exposing certain individuals that wasn't shown in the video, but they were talking about certain individuals and I'm sure they know who they were. And I'm sure the team could have figured out who they were uh, based on which (laughs) just how the coaches were talking. Uh, But if you guys don't know, Coach Prime received an email from, it looked like it was a Spanish uh, 1010 class, which likely means it's like an introduction to Spanish class, like a lower division class. Um, in most cases, at least that's what the classes, what ones are. Um, and realistically, you'd never want to h- receive an email as a coach from a teacher because obvious, obviously you respect what each other do, but if you're receiving an inter- or intern, if you're receiving an email about, someone from whatever it may be, then you know that there's going to be some inter beef right there. And obviously, yeah, so I looked it up right now. Spanish 1010 is a beginning Spanish course that assumes no prior knowledge or experience with Spanish. So obviously it is not like they are being asked to write essays in Spanish. They are asked to make sentences or conjugate verbs and conjugate stuff. And some of these guys clearly have been not living up to their end of the bargain. And the email was quite detailed it was quite an embarrassing i would say email for those individual players and i think it only got more embarrassing so if you guys aren't familiar with what happened this is what the email from the professor said this semester has been extremely challenging for me as a professor i have never felt so disrespected in my 10 years of teaching students do not follow even minimally and it slows my class down so much they make it clear they don't want to be here and have very little personal responsibility They also said the teacher, the professor also said they do not bring anything to the table, that they ruin the class for the students and suggested that those guys um, no longer take online classes. Um, They don't go to the breakout rooms. Uh, I guess one of the players is constantly showing up shirtless and there was other ones that simply just don't go to classes. So if you have if you're not familiar with Zoom, a breakout room is like you have an online class. Your teacher's like, okay, we're going to do group work. And so you're supposed to just like literally press press a button and you're in your group. And these guys can't even do that. And so they're obviously struggling in the class. Spanish is not an easy language to learn by any means. I took four years of it in high school and I barely know enough to like converse, but you know, I've learned enough to pass the classes. Like that is what it is. And I think a lot of these guys are just showing up and not doing what they need to do. And so coach prime said, you're going to get something out of this. You're going to be a man or you're going to be a great football player. And since you choose not to be a great football player, yikes, we're going to make you a man. And then Coach Prime later said, I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little angry right now because we in this new collective in the NIL state of mind, we got youngsters that's all in on one side of the game. 90% or 95% of your roster ain't going pro. So coaches, we got to emphasize education. We got to emphasize life. And we got to emphasize the next next elevation if it ain't going to work in the game or if it don't work in the game, excuse me. So I hear this and it's like, oh, this is not ideal because obviously these guys – in layman's terms, we'll just put it this way. They are not keeping up with an intro level class, which is online. And in most online classes these days, I'm not recommending it. I'm not condoning it, but you could probably cheat. You could probably Google things. You could do whatever you got to do to get through the class. You're online. You can do whatever the hell you need to do. And these guys are not even able to take this class seriously. Not to mention, there's no football like it's not in season right now. Obviously there's spring ball, but they practice twice a week or three times a week at most. Like obviously they have weightlifting and stuff like that, but that's always going to be a thing. That's never not going to be a thing. 
they don't they're not in season they're not learning their playbook they're not or they're not learning the game plan excuse me they're not learning oh this team likes to do this in certain looks they are simply going to practice lifting weights and then doing stuff on their own time class is always going to be a part of it and coach prime he lectured these guys or this team last year about the importance of having a plan for life after football because you have to take school seriously because like he said not all of them are going pro it's a harsh reality i don't think you every every player when they hear that for the most part is like yeah he's talking about like someone else i'm gonna go pro and it's like for the most part none of you guys are gonna go pro um you guys may get like an nfl tryout you may get like a cfl look but the nfl is there's a lot of bodies there's a lot of players everywhere that are really good that get overlooked so to think that every one of you guys are individuals are special enough to make it to the league it's just not happening so when i see this i'm like the problem is and i don't want to say it's a culture problem but i do agree with coach ryan that's an nil problem and i think everyone in college football is probably experiencing this i'm just worried does this affect the team in the season is this going to be an issue when the season gets going are they gonna pull like take their foot off the gas even more Because realistically, you can't have that happen during the season. This is a big season for Colorado. Colorado is expected to make it to a bowl game. They are hoping to make it to the Big 12 championship. They are hoping to make it to the college football playoff. If you guys, if you got guys that are failing classes and not eligible, that does not work. Simply do the work, do what you have to do to be on the field. And I hope for their sake, they figure things out. And I I'm curious if this is a problem that Coach Prime is just going really hard on right now so that way it doesn't happen again, or if this is going to be something that continues on and it's going to plague him uh, this next season. He also made it a point to be like, okay, which we don't see this in the video, like the players' names, but he goes, this guy, does he have a grade, like an NFL draft grade? And Corey Phillips was like, nope, he does not. In the background, you can hear him. And then he's like, okay, this guy, does he have a draft grade? It was like, nope. So he was really trying to, put it on these guys like you guys are not it like you guys have all the potential but you're choosing not to live up to your potential in football and then you're choosing not to live up to your potential in life which means they're kind of just there vibing and they're like okay with being like some guys and i remember uh when i used to write about texas there was a a player on the team who rarely played and he was a formerly high title recruit and so when i talked to someone about him they're like you know what some guys are just happy to be on the team they're just happy to get the gear. They're happy to be on scholarship. They show up, do the bare minimum, and they'll play every once in a while, but they don't live up to their potential because they are satisfied. And hopefully that these guys, they don't get satisfied with just being at Colorado and being a part of the Coach Prime experience. Hopefully they take advantage of that and look to take advantage of the opportunity and maybe possibly possibly take it to the next level. But that's obviously up to them. I would say this is something to kind of be concerned about. I wouldn't say this is like life or death, but – it is kind of a tough situation to see that it's a Spanish 10-10 class, so it's intro to Spanish. Barely, they're probably learning like elementary Spanish. It's not in season, so they're not even at their full like schedule. Like they're not as busy. They're going to be in fall, and then it's just like you're supposed. We the expectation was that Colorado was going to have like a new vibe, a new culture. It was new everything. And this is a little bit of of the same stuff that we saw last year. So it is really interesting to see this. Um, Obviously, I fully commend Coach Prime for how he handled it. I think he's really doing a great job of it. Um, But I think it's also more it's it's on him and his staff, I guess, to maybe make school more of an emphasis even more, which I think he did. And I obviously think it's more so on the players to not um, take it or to not overlook the opportunity that they have at a at a college institute college institution that is paying for their schooling and they don't have to pay for anything and they could get a good degree and they could get a job after this if things work out but when you're failing classes it does not go well so you guys comment below is this a reality check for the players or is this like a reality check for coach prime that he needs to put more of an emphasis on their schooling you guys comment below what you think and we could discuss in the comments if need be when we come back we're going to be talking about all things Shador sanders where he ranks Amongst the top quarterbacks in college football, I think they ranked them too low recently, but well, I'll let you guys decide. 
This episode of Locked on Bus is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy. When you have that many quality candidates, so easy. In fact, the 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to Locked On Bus. Appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen of the day. We are talking about ESPN's top 10 quarterback rankings. And let me tell you, I disagree with them. They start off, and the main reason I disagree is because they have one Mr. Shador Sanders ranked as the eighth quarterback in the country below guys like Jalen Daniels from Kansas, who Colorado's going to play in the Big 12, Jackson Dart from Ole Miss, uh, No Fafita. Colorado is also going to play them in the Big 12. Jalen Milrow, excuse me, Quinn Ewers, Dylan Gabriel, and Carson Beck. Now, realistically, I think if you're going to put any quarterbacks above Shador, the only ones where I'd be like, that makes sense, Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, everyone else, no. I think Shador has shown at a higher level, or not at a high level, at a higher rate that he could play at the highest level. He did so at Jackson State. Uh, he was shattering records left and right. Um, he threw for, I think it was like 70 touchdowns um, during his time at Jackson State. And then he comes to Colorado and everyone's like, oh, he's not going to do that well. He's a FCS quarterback. He played at H- HBCU level. It's not the same. Well, he threw for 27 touchdowns. In his two years at Jackson State, he had 70 touchdowns and 14 picks. This past season, he had 27 touchdowns and three picks. Now, obviously, he was sacked a lot more um, this past season than he was at Jackson State in Jackson State's first two years. He was sacked a combined 58 times. Last year, he was sacked 52 times. So he was sacked nearly as much in one year than he in than in the two years prior. He had completed 69% of his passes, threw for 3,230 yards, 7.5 per pass. Obviously, does a little bit of everything for the buffs. And so it's like he comes to Colorado and people doubted him. People doubted. They doubted the team, and I think doubting the team was fair. But doubting Shador Sanders, I think there was just questions. I had questions. I didn't doubt him. I just didn't know it would click for him so quickly. Um, I thought of someone like Cam Ward or Vernon Adams Jr. back at Oregon back in the day, who both of those guys had learning periods after dominating the FCS. So I was like, you know, he might take a couple weeks or two to get things going. It might not be the prettiest, but I'm sure it'd be solid. And his first game, he broke a record. So Shador Sanders is an elite quarterback. And then I look at these guys ahead of him. Like Carson Beck is a winner. Carson Beck threw for 3,941 yards, 40 or 24 touchdowns. Uh, he even added four scores. Um, Dylan Gabriel was a Heisman contender at one point. Quinn Ewers uh, viewed as one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He he's his numbers don't really show it, but he was had a huge year last season in terms of improvement. He was able to um, really cut back on his errors and misses on deep throws and kind of was able to lead that Texas team all the way to the playoff with the help of the defense. Jalen Monroe is where I, I'm – this is where I feel like a hater almost. It's like I'm going to start hate, not hating, but like these guys I'm just going to have to pick them apart. Like Jalen Monroe, I don't feel like he was the best passer in the in, in college football by any means. I think he's an elite athlete with a huge arm, but I don't think he always had the best control of his arm. And I think Shador Sanders should be ahead of him. Obviously, he led Alabama to the playoff, but like similar to Quinn Ewers, which – Quinn Ewers, I think, is better than Milrow. I think they both benefit from having great teams around them. So is Milrow really the fourth best quarterback in college football? I doubt it. No Fafita, I just haven't seen enough from. Um, he played, um, he didn't play in every game. And I think, obviously, he had really big numbers for not playing every game. But I feel like nine out of ten people, with the tenth person being um, someone from Arizona, nine out of ten people would take Shador Sanders over No Fafita. Jackson Dart, I think, had a really – Good season last year. Um, I think it was a sort of a, a step up from what he was looking like the year before. I think there was 
There was a reason they brought in Spencer Sanders. There was a reason they brought in Walker Howard. They brought in all these guys to kind of push him or replace him. And I think he lived up to or he stepped up at the table. But I don't know if he's better than Shador. And then Jalen Daniels is always hurt. So I don't I would I would say he's a top 10 talent, but I wouldn't even put him in the top 10. He's literally always hurt. Uh, he has never had a healthy season um, in his two years. And it's just one of those things where it's like, how could he be a top 10 quarterback if he's never healthy? Um, Cam Rising is right below Shador. And while I just said that you can't be a top 10 quarterback while never being healthy, Cam Rising always gets hurt in the bowl game. So he gets him to the game, then he, hurt, then he gets hurt. Obviously not great, but Cam Rising is obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Um, Jalen Daniels, I think, has that potential. But Shador Sanders needs to be up in the top three. Realistically, he has a combination of arm strength, accuracy, IQ. He's probably going to be the first, the first quarterback taken next year in the NFL draft. So with that being said, I feel like it should translate to the college level that he should be the best uh, quarterback in college football. But nonetheless, we'll have to wait and see. You guys comment below where you would rank um, Shador in this top 10 if you were asked to rank them, because obviously it's very hard to rank quarterbacks these days. You never know who could do what the best because everyone's asked to do different things. So we'll just put it that way. Um, you guys comment below where you think Shador should rank though. I think he should be in the top three at worst, maybe at worst number two. Um, I do think he's one of the, the best quarterbacks in college football. I think he could be the top quarterback in the sport, but that's my opinion. You guys let me know what you think. When we come back, we're going to be talking about all the latest on Colorado recruiting. Welcome back to Lockdown Buzz. Appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, making me your first listen of the day. Like I say all the time, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We are talking about all things Colorado recruiting because Colorado is making some moves. They are in the mix for, let me pull up my notes here. Whew. Five of the most highly touted players in the country, and they are making, they're making moves. They are. And it's not me just saying, Oh, they're going to do this. They're going to do that. They are getting some some pretty big looks here. Um, let's start off with possibly the replacement to Shador Sanders, TJ Latif. He recently visited Colorado, four-star recruit from Orange Lutheran, um, which is in Southern California. He was on a multi-day unofficial for the um, visiting Colorado. Um, obviously, he has tons of offers, but he wanted to see Boulder. And he said just to have the ability to get to – to get time to sit down with him for 45 minutes talking about Coach Prime was a big thing for him. His knowledge for the game is high, and what he has going for the program also high. Um, he raved about Coach Prime and what he's bringing to the table. Uh, he is ranked as the 228th player in the country, 16th quarterback in the country, number 22 player in the state. Uh, also has officials with Nebraska scheduled for later this month, and then he also took a trip to UCLA. Um, he said that Colorado is showing him a lot of love and he feels like a priority. And then obviously um, he says that he kind of respects how coach prime treats the recruiting process because he only gets the guys that he wants. He treats it in a way he I think he compared it to the NFL draft, which is an interesting way of looking at it. Cause coach prime, I guess is very selective with the recruits he takes in. Um, and obviously you got to be able to, like if coach prime's taking you in as a high school recruit he has a lot of a lot of faith in you um also colorado landed another commitment from the 2024 class um which it was a late it was a late 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 edition uh malachi murphy who is a bradford high school corner um he chose which is from um alachua florida don't know if i'm saying that right uh he picked colorado over a handful of programs um, he had a ton, he had a few offers, you know, um, his process was a little different than most, obviously waited until the very end here to kind of get into the mix with Colorado. Um, he played at Bradford high school. Uh, he, it said he had three offers. Um, it says he was Florida A and M and Stetson and then Colorado six foot one, one ninety. more depth to that cornerback room, which doesn't hurt. They obviously just landed another corner not too long ago. Um, which I think was, Kind of a, a statement on Coach Prime's part that like he's still looking for talent. Um, he got Ebenezer Boozy from Naples, Florida, the three-star, uh, who just signed with Colorado recently. And then obviously they just got Malachi Murphy unranked, um, doesn't have any stars. But Colorado's still expecting to add um, Draylon Miller to the mix, Cameron McKell, and then Kier, uh, Kieran Garcia are all guys that are going to be joining the fold eventually. And then, like I said, 
prior in the episodes. They added some other transfers, Sam Hart, that tied in. So Colorado continues to make additions. Um, and then they're getting a visit from five-star defense lineman Elijah Griffin, who will be visiting in April, which is a pretty big deal for Colorado. Um, he's going to visit on April 20th, um, which obviously is a few weeks or a few days before the spring game. So he's going to have a chance to see Boulder, and Colorado is going to have a chance to get uh, much more physical in the, in the trenches, which is a huge thing. And then they also hosted Zaire Addison, who's the offense lineman. Um, he was excited about the visit. Um, he told Adam Munson Tiger from twenty four seven. He had, he said that he liked Coach Prime's vision or vision for him. Uh, he loved how he connected with the players and said that you could tell that the staff cares about him. Um, and then the coach, the new offensive line coach, Phil Holt, Holt, Phil Lodeholt, was a big deal as well. So Coach Prime out here making moves in the recruiting ranks. Um, I do plan on having a recruiting insider coming on the show pretty soon, so that way we can dive into all these things at a, even more depth, so that way um, you guys can get the latest on that. Um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day and making me your first lesson of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow. Make sure to go check out our recent episode. We I had an episode with Buff Prime, Buffton Prime. Um, those two guys joined the show. It was fantastic. They had a great breakdown. I feel like we had a great, a great time chatting with them. So go check that out. And I hope you guys have a great start to your week.